Hey everybody, this week we are excited to talk about having a multifaceted career as a musician. a lot the pandemic has taught us a lot 2020 taught us a lot and as we are getting into 2021 i hope that some of you are vaccinated and beginning to think about going back to the stage or whatever your artistic expression is and i think you know even if this had never happened i think it was a good tool for us to think about the fact that we really need to do as many things as we can, right? Oh, as yeah. many things as we're gifted to do, we should develop those gifts. Mm -hmm. And the more gifts you have, the more likely you are to be able to sustain yourself and no, no matter, you know, good times, bad times. So yeah. what were some things that you thought or you think that people can do to have a multifaceted career? Not only just because of a pandemic or anything, but just because they want options. Oh, yeah. Well, never... Stop learning. I feel like that's a huge thing. I mean, you know, you've gone through what, like how many different podcasts? Like no. every day it's like it's a different <laughs> podcast. But I mean, I see, you know, you're constantly learning like all the time, like reading books um, is very helpful. I mean, just continue to grow. I mean, luckily, you know, we were forced to stay home and that gave us the opportunity to do things like that. But that should be happening anyway, you know? Right, yeah. um, I mean, you never know what's gonna happen and, you know, pandemics happen, what, every 100 years? So or, it's a good thing yeah. none of us will have to do this again. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, yeah. we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, but this should be a lesson into just continue to grow, continue to learn, um, building a network. Um, I actually don't like using that word. Um, it's kind of slimy, but, you know, yeah, you yeah. know, it's just nice to, you know, talk to talk to friends and build new relationships that probably didn't have a chance to do um before um you know like yeah i understand that zoom fatigue is a thing but you know even just changing up like having facetime with friends and and just making connections and golly i feel like we've you know made more friends like in the last year or so just um just by talking with people and partnering with different people yeah and that's been a good thing yeah. you know being mm -hmm. able to connect with colleagues so we are embarking on the summer of 2021 when you're watching this video and fortunately unfortunately probably there still be a lot of things that are online yeah. and so you know you should start thinking to yourself you know, it's what it is, you don't know, love it, but this is a great time to go to some conferences. And if there are some festivals mm -hmm. that you can go to, go to them and meet people. These relationships that you build during this time, they will still last post you being in your house. And so not only is it a great relationship building opportunity, but it's super affordable now. I mean, yeah, there's, there's no reason to not do anything at all because you know, if you're gonna do this virtual, you don't have to pay for a plane ticket or <laughs> lodging. Um, yeah, registration fees are definitely um, lower considerably. So yeah, I mean, there's no excuse to want to further yourself and just have continue ed continuing education. I mean, we've done that as well. And it's just been amazing just to grow in different ways. You know, a lot of people feel like, oh, you're a professor or you have a doctorate degree. Like you don't have to learn anymore. Like that's, that's baloney. Um, and if you're, yeah, and if you're, I mean, if you're in that mindset, like, you know, you're not really serving your community that well, it's just point blank. So. Yeah. yeah, and I think that we all, you know, maybe school teaches us that once you get certain landmarks, you've arrived. But yeah. I feel like the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. So The more you know, the more you grow. <laughs> <laughs> so building relationships, that's one. How about thinking about, like, if you're a teacher? That's probably been the most stable job <laughs> during this time. And mm -hmm. probably in general, people think of that as sort of a stable, safe career. What do you think about teaching and how people can grow in that area? Um, I mean, there are several things that um, people can do um, when it comes to teaching, um, just casting out a wider net, like maybe not just focus on 
where you're at at the moment. Like one thing that I've realized, um, and it's happened actually even like before the pandemic, is just you know casting a wider net, teaching students. I've been able to teach students like all over the world. And you know before, yeah, I mean I, I might have someone send an email like you know what is your approach to this, but now like you can actually like work with people and. And so like, that's like a great thing just to, you know, kind of, you know, cast a wider net um, with what you're doing. Um, giving master classes has been a thing. Um, normally, you know, we're traveling, giving classes, but, you know, I feel like almost every week, you know, I'm giving a master class somewhere and it's great to be able to interact with other, um, other people and just getting like different, um, get different feedback and, and people are listening to different um, points of view as well. And I think as a teacher, you know, whether you are teaching at an institution or you're teaching, you know, independently, um, switching it up from now on. I mean, whether you prefer being in person or not, I think we've definitely got some things we can take and keep, yeah, right? Yeah, um, and so one of those things might be is having like a virtual recital for one quarter, having an in-person recital for another quarter, or the or maybe splitting your studio if you have a very large studio and in different theme groups. Mm -hmm. um, so that's worked really well too. And I think it's a sort of opportunity for some people who may still not want to travel as much or some people who just never wanted to travel. I mean, come on, we know some of you are hermits. So yeah. <laughs> but this is the best time of your life. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you know, going back to the virtual recitals, I mean that that has been great to still be able to interact with the audience. Mm -hmm. Yes, like we definitely miss being on the stage, and we'll be ready to go back and doing that. But yeah, we had the opportunity to do like live recitals, like from our home, or do video recordings, um, and still be engaged um, with audiences. So um, just because right now you can't go out and actually you know perform in front of the audience. Like don't hold, don't let that hold you back. Like there's still opportunities where you can just you know get out there and still create. Yeah, and finding spaces. I mean, you know, I want a new house, right? Because <laughs> I need a bigger piano, of course, if I'm going to be doing concerts at my home. Um, but all aside, I think that it's an opportunity to be able to get your art out there, right? If yep. you can do it from your home, if you can do it from the local store, from your school, um, this is just, it's prime time to be doing videos mm -hmm. and sort of collecting data for yourself, you know? It's yeah. like, we were always doing that anyway, yep. but I think this is sort of forcing us to do it in greater depth and in greater detail. So, if you haven't already, I think start collecting your own performance data, start recording and putting that stuff out there, even if it's just at the very least on social media networks, just so people can see who you are. So when right. it's time for you to play wherever, it's already there. Exactly. Yeah. So that's one of the ways we've kind of sustained ourselves, you know, during this time is through online performances. Mm -hmm. What else should they be doing to build a multifaceted career? How about yeah. advocacy? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I think this time has been really eye opening for some and then for others, it's been just sort of telling of things that were already there. And I think it's a great time to sort of be like a music ambassador of whatever issue kind of like really gets you boiling and it's really exciting. It's a really exciting time. You know, for myself, I got to contribute two things. One was a book of African-American spirituals for kids. And that is not something I was planning on doing. Like, I don't write. I'm, I'm still sort of shocked. I mean, you've been looking at me like, what are you doing in that corner? <laughs> Um, so that's been something that, I mean, I didn't know I was an advocate for little kids, you know, to learn this music until now. So that's been really cool. And then another thing was to be able to contribute to a course of Black American composers and getting that repertoire out for older and more advanced levels. So mm -hmm. what do you think? Like, I know people are always asking you to be on their stuff. Like, what are you advocating for these days? Um, just diversity in classical music and representation is really like close to my heart and I think that's really important and representation matters and so and also I mean I think it's important especially for the next generation and that's why I love teaching and you know whether that's like just one just being there just being present to um, repertoire introducing new repertoire or something even 
pre-pandemic that I've always been big on and wanted to introduce new music to um, different audiences. And so like that's, you know, been nice to be able to continue to still do those things. Yeah. And then all of us are probably getting better at our video editing skills too. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It was definitely bare bones before, but you know, just learning how to um, use, like have certain lighting. Like I didn't realize how bad my lighting was. I was doing, I was using Zoom way before pandemic. I've been using it for the last six years, but you know, it was bare bones audio, bare bones lighting, but now, you know, it's definitely a production. Um, just so it's great for everybody, like not just for myself, but for the people who are listening. So like if I'm listening to a certain person, like knowing, oh, well, this audio needs to be better like your video quality can be better so yeah we've all had to learn how to you know step up our game when it comes to that for yeah. sure big yeah. time mm -hmm. big time so for yourself you know think about these categories teaching if that's what you do or performing if that's what you do or advocacy um and then recording we've been talking about video recordings but obviously we've all been performing recording artists before now yep. too mm -hmm. um and just think you know where am i kind of make yourself one to ten i'm awesome at this like teaching has been never been better or i used to play a lot and now i'm not and i need to reinvent myself in some way or recording i've never recorded anything right mm -hmm. or advocacy i've never even thought about being an advocate for you know whatever causes are closest to my heart so Rank yourself and then think about how can you go forward into this summer and really take the time to evaluate and redirect so that you can be the best multifaceted musician that you can be. Did I get everything? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you know where to find us. We're at the McCain Duel, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. And YouTube, <laughs> YouTube, yeah. YouTube. yeah. That's Make sure the most important thing. Yeah, part. most important thing. Make sure that you Click the um, subscribe button and the bell so you can receive all the notifications. And you can also check us out on our website at McCainDuo.com. He's really great at that. Okay, see you all. Bye. <laughs>